Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week Part 2. In this video we're going to cover how to link and bind one file into another. Let's say I'm doing a series of buildings and I want to put them all in the site together. The proper way would be actually, well one way would be to create your buildings and then if you had a large site you could then link them all into the site plan, uh, set them at the proper elevations, etc. That's a, a, a nice clean way to do it. Now another thing that may happen is I need to bring a building in a building into another file and I want it to be working in that file so we could also link a file and then bind it and if you're an AutoCAD user you understand that concept link and bind and AutoCAD would be extract it in and bind it and then explode it and the objects work together so we're gonna go through that now uh, in this model by 3D the same one I used in the previous video here it is just a little building and I have to bring it into another project whether it has other buildings or etc that's up to you so I'm gonna drop this down and just keep it simple I'm going to say new project and I'm going to use a simple template. So I'll use a commercial template, hit open, and hit open. Now in this model, I don't have uh, a lot of stuff set up, but I do have a level one. I'm going to go to my north elevation. I got a level one and a roof. Now really we're not going to use much of this. I'm just going to link that other model in. Go back to level one. Now Revit doesn't like to link models that are open. So what I need to do is tab, control tab a couple of times. And I need to go close this. So I'm going to uh, drop this down and hit close. All right. Now we're back in our model, roof plan, north, south, east, and west. So here we are. I'll go back to level one, and we're going to link the model in now. So uh, zoom in right where we need to be. Go to Insert, Link Revit. We go pick the file. Now I've got some training files on my desktop. I'm just going to buzz on over to it, and we go down here to Revit Samples. And I'm gonna pick one of these little mid-rise files here. Now, at this point, instead of auto center to center, I'm gonna say origin to origin. That's gonna put the zeros, all line up the zeros. If again, if you're from the AutoCAD world, and it should drop it on in there. Now, um, it's being upgraded because it's an older file, and I should have taken care of that before we did this. But you now things, those things happen. So we're gonna pause for it to do its little thing. Okay. Well, it just came in, and uh, you'll notice it looks looks kind of normal. When I select this thing, it is a link. So when it's highlighted, you'll notice that this item, it comes up top and it says it's a linked model, and uh, it works as a single object. Now, if I go to my south elevation, you'll notice that there it is, and it's sitting right. Now, I'm going to check that my levels are, are equal, level one, level one, all good. Now, I can take this building, and I can now hit the bind link. What it's going to do, it's going to take it from a linked model and it's going to make it actually uh, part of this model. So hit uh, bind link. Now it's going to come up and says, do you want to attach the levels and grids? In this instance, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to bring in the levels and grids because I've got a lot of stuff associated with it. I'm thinking I might as well just bring it in and we go ahead and hit OK. So this is another way to bring it in. Again, it's processing it and it's going to com convert it into in essence a block. Revit calls it a group. It'll be a group and then I can explode the group if I want. So now back once the models come in, you've got a couple of warnings and I'm just going to hit OK on that right now. Uh, now when I pick the what used to be a link, you'll notice now that it's it's a group. Now I'm going to try to highlight it there and see if it picks it up. So you see that this one actually works as a group and I'll go back to level one. Now you see it's a group. I can still move it around and adjust it if I need to. Once I'm done, I hit ungroup. I hit ungroup and now those parts are in the model just like anything else. So time to check it out and we'll also take a look at the views. Now if we had annotation on the views, we may lose it. Um, but yeah, if you need to bring something in, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So we let's go ahead and take a look. We don't have any levels over here, but you say, boy, it'd be nice if I did. So we're going to go up to the View tab, and we're going to drop this down, and you'll see how we can make floor plans for the views, that uh, for the levels that don't exist. So I'm going to tell Revit to come in here and create all those views, and I hit OK on that. So it creates the views for us. You'll notice they're coming, up, coming about right now, and there's all the levels. Now, if I do go back to the previous, let's say, south elevation, I have the old roof level. It's not doing anything. I can go ahead and delete that. So uh, highlight the element, hit the delete, and it should go away. Now you need to be careful with deleting levels. If something was on this level, 
whether it's a roof or it's doors or something, you can totally screw a project up by doing that. So be careful. I'll select it. Um, and then I go up top and I can delete it. So I'm not sure why, why that's not happening, but we go ahead and grab this level, hit the delete button, and okay. Let's see, it may be something pinned. I'm not exactly sure why it's not deleting. But there you go. That's how you bring a, bring a one model, a one project into another project and, and make it happen. So hope you enjoyed those two tips. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Have any questions? Check us out on the web at thebimguys.com.